You okay? <laughs> um, so the question is what um, effects, sorry, the question is what effects should pictures have um, to appeal to the jury? I think at this stage we don't actually know what pictures we're looking for. The great fun of being on a jury is that you do get a fantastic surprise when you see the pictures coming in. And if you go in with really strong preconceptions, you don't necessarily choose the right pictures. Um, so for me, I don't know exactly what pictures will win, but they'll be the pictures that really wow me, the pictures that I weren't expecting to see, the pictures that I think are really creative. So we like creative. Um, as a jury, we have a lot of experienced photographers who've judged a lot of competitions. We've seen a lot of great pictures in the past, and I'm sure when we see pictures that we haven't seen the like of before, they'll be the ones that really work for us. The question is, um, do juries always like the same pictures? Um, for me, I think that can happen in certain competitions. Um, this competition, for example, has quite strict um, categories, and within those categories there's certainly going to be types of images that do well. Um, but certainly for me as a judge, I don't like awarding the same pictures again and again and again. I know what I've seen in the past, and I'm going to respond to pictures that are new, but not new for the sake of being new. You know, it's got to be a quality image. You know, I'm not going to give my votes to pictures that aren't producing the goods. I, um, I think one of the things people don't understand about being on a jury is when you're on a jury, you're being judged just as much as the photographers. And you really want to make the right decisions. You want people, when the public see those pictures, to go, yes, I understand why the jury chose that one as the winner. And so, you, you know, you want the pictures that have that wow factor, that have that great impact. And sometimes, there obviously, there's classic types of underwater pictures that do have that type of um, those elements coming together in the same way, you know, beautiful sun rays in a wide angle shot always look beautiful. There's no point saying, oh, we can't have a, a beautiful sun rays wide angle shot because, you know, we've had that before. If it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, so um, that's, that's it. That's what I'm going to let the dog go at this point. So it's not going to ruin the continuity. Eh? Yes, you've had enough underwater photography talk. Go on, off you go. So the question is about um, what advice do you have for photographers diving in, in at home? Um, as someone, you know, my home diving is relatively similar. We have similar species in the UK, or the same species. We have similar visibility and conditions. Uh, the first thing I would say is that low visibility photography does cause you know, limitations on what you can do. So the first challenge is always to try and find the best visibility you can. And I certainly know when I dive in the UK, when I ring around my diving friends, the first question isn't how's the wife, the first question is how's the visibility. And when you know there's good visibility, that's when you put the effort in to say, right, you know, I'd rather take a day off work and have one day diving when I've got great visibility than maybe go down for a long weekend when the conditions aren't great. So chasing conditions is really important. Also, shooting to the conditions is really important. When the visibility is low, there are certain shots that you can take and certain shots that aren't going to work in low visibility. So know what you can and can't do and shoot to the conditions. Just because you, you dreamt when you were driving down to the dive site about a certain shot, if you get there and find the conditions aren't suitable for it, change your plans. The most important thing, as the, the logo for the, the competition says, is in low visibility, get close. Um, backscatter, people often think backscatter and avoiding backscatter is all about finding some magic strobe angle that's going to allow you to light the subject and not light the backscatter. The real key to avoiding backscatter is to get close. That, the, the problem of backscatter is a problem of volumes. It's the volume of light that both the strobe is lighting up and the camera is looking through. And if you imagine those cones coming out like this, if you, the best way to reduce the size of those cones is to shorten them in this direction. As soon as you get close to the subject, you massively reduce the volume of overlap between the strobe light and the lens. And that's what gets rid of backscatter. And you can shoot great wide angle in really low visibility as long as you're close. You can shoot super clean macro in this visibility as long as you're close. What you want to avoid doing in low visibility is spraying light around everywhere where you don't need it. Light only what you need to light, get close and you'll get amazingly good pictures. You know, you the background of your wide angle shot, you don't need to light it. So if you're close, you can get great pictures. So get close, um, don't create any poor visibility yourself, so learn to dive well um, and chase good conditions. Um, and choose suitable techniques for those, um, those, those, those conditions.